This is the world's largest floating slum village. 40% of the 20 million people in Lagos live in slums like Makoko, while billionaires live just right across, actually less than 5 kilometers away. You'd find the popular banana island with homes running into tens of millions of dollars. So this right here is Makoko, and to my left hand side is the popular banana island. Two different types of people live here. Extremely poor, extremely rich. This is one guy's home. Is that the real rich? The rich, the super rich. You can see it, it's just over there. About 200,000 people live here and earn between 30 to $50 monthly, which is not just under the poverty line, but high bed rate and disease comes with it. We don't have money, we don't have money. We are not rich by money, but we need to be rich by children. How about that has poop inside, yo? Like, there's poop in there. There's How poop. are they able to swim somewhere that yeah. has poop? This is not the first time. <laughs> the major sickness here is typhoid and malaria. I have been to the most luxurious communities in and around Africa, but I wanted to see what's like on the other side. How do these people manage to survive here? Are they happy? What is the government doing about it? And what does the future hold for them? I seek answers to these questions as I am here to investigate this floating slum village. I see for myself firsthand if all the things I have heard about Makoku is true. Makoko started off as a fishing settlement with family groups migrating here from Badagri and Bene Republic in the 19th century. An old map from 1962 says it all. As its population swelled and the land ran out, they moved onto the water. The people of Makoko have been under huge pressure in the last few years due to the rising value of land. Have you guys been having interest yes. from the government to demolish the community? Save our time. No, the first time they came, that was 2012. The government gave us 72 hour notice to evacuate all the house on water and they came in with their police and they started shooting. It was a massive shooting. So the next in command to my dad, they shot him to death. They shot some of our people to death. So we have to take those bodies to go and meet Governor Fashola. And when we got to Alausa, they said he's sorry for the loss and uh, there's nothing we can do about it. Just right now, we have, a, we have the people from the government. They're trying to sand fill the water from, look at them. Yeah. There's a dredging machine working outside. What they're trying to do is that they said they want to build a house like those houses at Lekki. They wanted to build it there. And if the government tried to do something like, the, like, like that here, the people here will not have the opportunity to stay here because they don't have the money to buy it from the government. That means the government is giving it to the rich people. Gentrification of real estate projects are threatening their right to live in the area they have been living in the last six decades. They are sand filling this area and they want to build luxurious real estate, obviously for the elite. I wonder what's going to happen to these guys. There's a man that came from the government. I don't know, he's into estate business and all that. He tried to talk to the elders and the community leader. The plan was that he said they wanted to sand fill the whole Makoko. Yeah. Then the people said no. But locals rumor there are more than 200,000 people, 75% under 20 years old. It is hard to tell the current population size here because no official census has been carried out and the birth rate is at an all-time high, which is introducing a growing yet starving population. The population here is young people. You can see between the age of like 7 all the way to 20 very frequently. Why is that? I'm seeing less old people. Almost every woman that I have seen here is pregnant. Is it like People are giving beds here at a high rate. The, the reason is uh, we are not rich by money, but we need to be rich by children. So, if you don't have money, you need to have children. So if you're not rich by money, you are rich by children. Yes. So which means if you have like 15 children, you are rich. Yeah, rich. So how do you convert that to tangibles, like purchasing power? Like most of them go outside to work now. They have oh, so these children go to work and it's so they can bring they, in they money. They can bring in more money. Do you guys have like a hospital when people get sick here, where do they go to? We don't have hospital, but we a have clinic. maternity. We just we heard somebody medicine. just give birth to twins. So let's just go take a look at the baby and sort of like the facilities. No, we have two mothers here. There are two, okay, two different mothers. Yes. Two, oh, okay. Why is the baby here? It was the last. Yeah? She just give birth to the child now, just yes, now. Bro. Just right now? Yeah, just right now. Are you excited for your baby? She said yes, God have done it. How many do you have now? She said five. Five children. So this one is the fifth one. Yeah, you give me a This is the fifth one? Yes. How many more are you looking to have? She was saying no and she was saying yes at the same time, definitely. So so the other woman gave birth to her own on Sunday. This one on Sunday? Yeah, this, on one, Sunday. Just this today. one just today. Where is the father? The father has gone for fishing. What does she do for work? As usual. Fishing. What? Yeah, when the husband come back for the fish, then she will have to be the one to smoke the fish and take it to the mainland for sale. But like what she was trying to say that, like they need bed. They need a bed. Like, this so is you can see guys. They're actually sleeping on hardwood. There's no it's hardwood, so they need somewhere to sleep. All right then, take care of your baby, all right? He's gonna bring something for you, okay? 
Makoko is sometimes referred to as the Venice of Africa, owning to its waterways. And the environments like Venice. People fly all over the world to get to Venice, yeah. Italy. Italy. And this is just as beautiful. But the water looks nothing close to that of Venice. This black-like looking water is a lot of things to people living here. It serves as a sewage dump, bathing water, swimming pool, and sometimes cooking water. The fact that this water has poop inside is just, oh my god, look at kids swimming here. That water has poop inside, yo, like, it has this poop in there. Yeah, there's How poop. are they able to swim somewhere that yeah. has poop? <laughs> this is not the first time. <laughs> this is not, even me when I was small. Yeah, so I this is not the first time. yeah, this is the first time. Even me when I was small, I do jump inside. So, what, so what has changed now? But right, but right now, I do go outside after the bridge to swim. Yeah, everything goes straight into the water. The sheet, everything, everything goes straight into the water. Okay. So the person they sheet put inside where you go, she go to swim. They said they just pass under the sheet and come out from the other side. <laughs> so this water we do here, you feel bad for this water? Yes. As I like, say, we won't make something like food, we won't eat. We'll just take the water, do gari and cook stew. This water? Yes. But it's dirty now. Like, look, the water is dirty, yo. But, but it can't even dirty. You know dirty for your eye? Yes. It didn't clean. So if you use water cook, do tea? Yes. You the bath inside, you the shoot inside? Yes, yes. We don't get any water to use. Mm. And we now use the water. No wonder typhoid is a major sickness here. So do you guys have like a central re refuge um, dump where the, the, all your trash, all your dirt, all your everything goes to? Before we have a government local boat that yeah. comes around to pick the trash. Uh -huh. But since uh, the community is having a problem with the government. So right now, they don't come again. They don't come again. I met this man from America who is trying to plant seaweed to clean the water. Oh, nice cool. to meet you, sir. Yeah. We've heard so much about you already. Well, thank you. He told me you came all the way from the States, yeah, yeah. right here. Yeah. So I want to really understand, because I am a Nigerian. I live not too far away, but I cannot come here to stay for not even a day. And I, you're here for what, three months? What is the motivation? Why did you choose to leave your country, come here and live with these um, guys right here at Makoko? Beautiful people, just wonderful people. They, they just need some help with their food and water and getting their utilities going. I've always wanted to help people who needed help. It sounded like I could help with growing food and fish and showing the people a new way of maybe growing plants that they can use to eat and sell. And that's what I do in the U.S. I grow plants and fish. So how are you able to survive living here? Why not in Banana Island or something? Once you love people, you can live anywhere. Life is about relationships. Yeah. When you care about people and they care about you, you can sleep on a cot. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you sleep. Each accommodation usually house between 6 to 10 people and a high percentage are rental properties here. So this is your house, sir? Huh? This is my house. So how much do you pay for rent, sir? I don't need to pay for rent. I'm a son of the chief. According to your uh, culture, you don't yeah. even need to pay. So you are living rent free? Yeah, I'm living free. But what's the average rent for other people? That's 3,000 per month. The highest one is 5,000. If you were going to put this place for rent, how much would somebody have to pay per month to stay here? 120 US dollars. So I don't know if you can show us where you stay right now. Should we go take a look at it? Yeah. Somebody's coming here to from outside of Nigeria. They're coming here to help others. Any money I pay or put into it, I know goes to the school, or orphanage, or to someone who doesn't have a job. I gladly pay rent. Everything's new. This is not even a month, the whole building's not even a month old. We're catching water off the roof and going into that tank. Right now, people will take their boat to a well, pay money to have the get water, to get the water, and then they have to buy bottled water. But they get so much rain a year, all, all they have to do is catch it, and they've got all the water they need, and they save money. Yeah. But when you're so poor, you don't have time to think about this. You're just trying to figure out how to get food for the day. This was sixty dollars. We've got another uh, tub system that we're building, and that'll take Green care of. In. That, that side there. Where, where is your room? And this is what I call the missionary room. And this is Solomon. Solomon's Hi, Solomon. helped me on every single project. Oh, He's, wow. He translates and keeps me out Does of trouble. Does he travel with you? Yeah. That, that's my bed. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so. This is your workstation, right? Yeah. And I teach school from there. I teach, I have US students that I teach there. And that's the bathroom. Right here. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and you, 
you can you oh, wow. kind of see how well, what the rest it, what it goes down there. Right. This is the solar system. It charges small things right now. Yeah. But the plan is to put a door right here in the next couple of days. Have a walkway and outside, and then there'll be a fish tank here with tilapia fish. So I'm trying to introduce growing plants to Makoko. They can grow their own tomatoes and cucumbers and peppers. That's just one more thing they have, and it'll turn the place green. I think it won't look like a slum if you have green. Do the plants help clean the water? The so plants save our lives. We don't really appreciate it. Taiwo is the principal of a local school and the son to the head of the community. He took me to his school and further reiterated the importance of education and how it helped him. Well, when we talk of Makoko, we're talking about land and water. 90% of the people on water, they don't go to school. To so school. this school is sort of like a reason for them to go to school. That's why we have to name the school Part of Solution. It's really hard for the children to like speak in English, but right now we thank God. What's the name of your school? The name of my school is Part of Solution. It's a primary school. What class are you in now? I'm primary five. What's your favorite subject? Basic science and technology. In the school now, we have 385 children. So what does the situation feel like? The school is free. Coming here to a community just makes me personally grateful for how I grew up. Uh, we also have an orphanage. Yeah. yeah, some of the children sleep here. Let me show you. They I... sleep here on the mattress like this? Yeah, they sleep on it. They don't have like a duvet cover or something? Yeah, some of them use mosquito net. The major sickness here is typhoid and malaria. So, so how many that's... kids can sleep in this place now? We have uh, 21 of them. 21 now. kids sleep here? Yeah. So this is a kitchen, this is where we cook. Yeah, this is like a toilet. Like huh? literally, I can see poop. Yes. I can't even look at that. Yo, I can't even. We are using here for class for now because we don't have enough space in the school. So I think if we can try to get like benches and desks for them. How many chairs and how many benches do you need? 20. 20 of them? Yeah, 20 of them. So each of them is how much? 15,000 naira. So right, as of now, if they want to learn, they sit here on the they floor. They sit here on the floor. If you're feeling like kid and you want to drop your two cents, I'll put a link in the description and then we're going to raise some money and then give it to him. So what, what class is this? Is this everybody in your class? No. Where are the other people? Some of them are like selling on water. They have to go and assist their parents. You no, know, some of them have to move by boat, move around and look for where to set their Sell stuff. stuff yeah. What are you guys learning today? Mathematics. Mathematics. Who likes math here? All right, they told us we should learn math that will be successful in life. Did you enroll to your school? No, no, no. See, I have a lot of them at home. A dad and mama, they, they're both not around. That's why she's not going to school. So she wants to go to school? Yeah, I told her to come to motion. She said she will come, but we need to talk to her to parents. Her parents yeah. So let me patronize your business. What can you sell? Yeah, I'm giving What can you sell to me for a thousand? You give them one thousand worth of products here. This is a school boat. So why is it covered? During rainy season, we yeah. have to use that to cover so that the wind will not be able to beat the children. So this, just like a normal school bus, yeah. it goes around picking up the kids? It goes around picking the kids to school. To school? Yes. This is the playground where they play their football. And uh, this is where we get our drinking water from. The drinking well, water? The drinking water from um, So I'm still working on the pipe. So this, this goes directly into the ground? Yeah, directly into the ground. This like, is already on water. Like yeah. how deep do you need to go in there to get drink, good drinking water? Yes, we need to use pipe like 15 feet. Like we use 20 of it deep down to the ground to get the clean water. I mean, we saw luxury real estate, top high end for the 1% of the 1% and coming here just makes me very humble because you guys keep telling me, hey Stephen, you have to go to places where the, an ordinary Nigerian will live. And that's one of like the motivation I got to make this video. Um, but I think it's the right time I tell you about the sponsor of this video, AfriChange. Cross-border remittance can be very challenging. With AfriChange, of course, you can send money across Africa, North America, and Australia. Users are able to send money from Canada and Australia to Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, and so many other African countries. With their multi-currency wallet to send and receive money, they've got one of the best exchange rates in the market with swift transaction processing and settlement time. And also, for the donation that we're going to be making to the community as well, if you want to send money, you can send money with AfriChain. One of the reasons why people will prefer AfriChain is because right here in Nigeria, you can pay fees to over 200 universities in Canada. So if you want to use AfriChain, you can download their app on Play Store or the App Store, right? You go ahead and put the money you want to send. It's going to show you the rate right there that you're sending. And boom, the money arrives almost instantly, all right? Give it a shot. Once again, AfriChain, thank you for sponsoring videos and allowing us to travel and tell very beautiful, beautiful story like this one. Now we're about to go into a bar. Do you drink? Yeah, yeah I'll take some drink. Do you drink as well? 
Small. Yeah, this is the bar where people catch fun on water. So they come <laughs> in. So this is Jemete, the owner of the bar, and also is the youth leader of Makoko Houses on Water. Uh, on a weekend, like how many people come here to drink? More than 100, 200 people, 300 that come here to catch fun. Does people here in the community really have that financial enablement to afford to buy beer here? Because you mentioned some of them make 30,000 a month. Like that's not even enough money for them to come and have fun. He said most of them, they don't have much money to like have a fun. Like, most of them can just come and take one bottle water or just any soft drinks. Most of them, they don't even have the money to cash the fund. In the month, you can make up to 40000 I was born and brought up there. Do you see yourself at some point leaving this community, going somewhere else, living life? One day, I will still live here. So people here, normally, they are living here because of their fishing activities. Yeah. Because that's the strength of the community. Yeah. So do you guys have like your own police, your own security? We don't have police around here. We have some elders that they work together. Like my dad, when they have a dispute, they'll be the one to call the two parties and make a peace. It's very peaceful. Like you see, you see a white guy living here. Yeah. And I have so many of them coming to stay here. Do they use internet? Are they aware of what is happening in Nigeria? Are they aware that you can actually be rich? Yes, they use phone. But right here, you can get Wi-Fi, you can get 4G from here. Yeah, 4G from here, even 5G. So how, how constant is the electricity? Uh, it's, not sta it's not stable. In India, like, how many, in India, how many hours can you get electricity for? Two to, two to three hours. Two to three hours a day out yes. of 24 hours? Yes. So yes. the remaining 22 hours, you're in darkness? Yeah, we're in darkness. So it's really dark at night, but we always try to navigate our, our way. Do you feel people here are happy? Oh, they're happy. Look at them now. They're happy. Look at the children. Yeah. They're happy. Even with all the difficulties and hardship, after spending the whole day here, I realized these people living here are the happiest I have ever seen. They're very welcoming to people that visit, except for this group of guys that tried to threaten me at the entrance. They said they would take away my cameras if I don't bribe them. They're very content, but just need basic amenities which the government has failed to provide them. I've had several interactions with the locals here. They seem to be very hardworking, ready to do anything that brings in money. What are the top three businesses right here at Makoko that a lot of people do? First is fishing. That's the strength of the community. Fishing. Whereby the men have to go out for fishing, then the wife has to be at home. So when they come back home with the fish, they give it to the wife. They either smoke it or take it fresh to the market for sale. This is a frozen fish. That means they have to go to the mainland to get it. You know some of them, their husband is not fishing now. They have to go and buy fish from outside. Mm. Then they have to run it and smoke it and take it to the mainland to sell. So yeah, something like 200 or 100 naira. So how much does she, she does she make a month doing this business? You know, she try to smoke like two carton. That's 1,000 naira. One carton is 500. And how many cartons will she deliver in a month? That she's making almost 30,000. Man, this thing is fucking in my eyes. Sorry. How is she able to stay in there? Fucking so in my we are used to it and uh, look at my eyes. Nothing was wrong with my eyes. <laughs> Guys, I'm already, I'm already tearing up. So where's the room? Where's the parlor? Where's the... That's it. This is it. This where is does, where does she this sleep? This is the parlor and... Where does she sleep? She sleep here. Here? Yes. How many people stay in this house? One, two, three, four. They said there are about six of them. Here. How many kids does she have? She said four of them that sleep with her here. In this place? Yes. She said she's selfish. Like one of this, like this is 500. Some of them, when they leave around 4 a.m., that means before 2 or 1, they come back. Yeah. Like someone like me, I go at night sometimes. Oh, wow. I base, I base on quick fish and crab. Oh. Most of the women, they have to go by their boats, moving around to look yeah. for who to buy their stuff from them. What do they sell? Can you call one of them for me? This soft drink, they have a, a mot, mirinda, team, and... A... How much is this? 300 naira. That's drinking water. They have to go by boat to get it. Yeah. This is them fetching water. Oh, okay. So they load this up. So this this is the one they drink, yeah? Yeah, this is the one they drink. Well, it doesn't look so clean, but okay. Do they do people okay, you say people have typhoid here as well, huh? Yeah, malaria. Malaria, typhoid. That's, typhoid. that's a major sickness here. This is a dressing salon. Yeah. And this is where they make bags, like the school bags and all kind of bag. What's the average income here? How much do you see an average person here makes in a month? Sometimes 30, sometimes 40. We have people that make up to like 50,000 a month. That's 50 dollars. We even have people that make more than 50,000. You can't that's see anybody making 150,000 no, no, here? No, that's too much. Huh? Even me myself, I don't make up to that. Why? <laughs> yeah, if someone can make more than 150, yeah, that's a lot to uh, We go jackpot and everybody will just... <laughs> well done. How are you be? Are you coming down now? Are they, are they chop life for you? Most of them here, they don't go to the land. They just stay here on the water? They just stay here on the water. Like a fisherman, like when you come back home with your net. Yeah. What you do is that you give the fish to your wife. Your wife will be the one to take it to the mainland. 
So you as a fisherman, you just have to be at home, then mend your net and sleep. Their schools, pharmacies, market clinics, restaurants, churches, school, mocks, shops, they've got street names like in any other city. Like this street now, what's the name? Uh, this is K2A. That's K2A. That's the guy K2A. It seems like we are on the express. What's this? This express is Balotowe. Balotowe. This is the, this is the eight lane express that takes you to land. So this, so this is a typical traffic jam where you have too many boats but you can't pass. So this is this is traffic right here. So you can't move. All the boats are all about. So you need somebody to come in now and clear everywhere. So these guys here are making this boat that we are on right now. So let's just go meet them. How profitable would this business be? They want to have enough work. They yeah. It's thousand eight. So how many boats have you made today? Two boats. Two boats. This one and this. How, how old are you? 12 years. Is this supposed to be in school? They said, they said they wait, go to wait. school. After school, they come back to learn. This, yes. This is where you stay. This, this is your house? Yeah, this is house. This yeah. is like, this is your place, huh? Yeah, this is... Adam, how are you doing now? This is my uh, This is your living room. Yes, sir. You have a flat screen TV. This is the... the... the room. How much do you pay for rent here in this place? He said he doesn't pay rent. How many kids does, how many kids does he have? Three kids. So when you born all these children, I hear them go stay. Yeah, I do. Yeah, eh? Who owns the shop? She owns, she owns it. How long have you been running this business? Three years now. Three years now. Is it very profitable? She said, like, things are not moving the way it's supposed to. So how many customers can she get in a month? So right now, it's really difficult to get, like, four customers a month. And on average, how much does she charge for something like this? Like I say, even most of the people here, you know, when they come to make their hair, you tell them this is the money they need to pay. Some of them start arguing and start saying, no, I don't have such a amount. Like this woman now, she has been talking to the woman that she needs to pay 1,500. No, she, is, she said no. She's paying 800 naira. 800 to get her hair done? Yes. That's less than a dollar. What do you think the government can do to really like improve this neighborhood right here, Makoko? They would have to bring in utilities. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they've got to help with sewage and electricity and, and water. Um, and that, that's, that's basic needs for any society. Yeah. So I, I think they need to recognize Makoko as a city and then uh, begin to provide services. Yep. I'm 60 years old and when I was a kid, they said, eat every bit of food on your plate because there's people hungry in Africa. My whole life, that stuck with me. But nobody ever talked about, well, what are you going to do about it? So finally, I feel like I can help. The government should just make Makoko a tourist center. Yes, tourist attraction for people to come and visit, I think. Then they have to do something about the water. Yeah, they do something because about the water. They do something about the building. Yes, that means they have to build the houses on water in the way that when people come, they'll love it. Please subscribe to Steven's channel. Thank you for your Thank time. You, I appreciate it. God bless you. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much for watching this video. Use the link in the description to make the donation to help this case with chair, stable, bedsheet, and duvet. And I'll see you in the next upload.